Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, ohayou gozaimasu. And I am, ex <laughs> I am exhausted. Eto, boku wa tsukurete iru. So this video here is about 10 minutes long, but the actual recording and the actual pairing was about 6 hours total. <laughs> yeah, that is a very long one. So this species here that you're seeing is my Monocentropus balfouri, also known as the Socotra Island Blue Leg Baboon Tarantula. And I would really appreciate it if everyone could leave this video a like, because this one here took a long time. But without further ado, let us get straight into it. This species here, the Monocentropus balfouri, and my entire tarantula breeding experience, this is probably the easiest tarantula to work with in terms of breeding because my goodness, females are so nice and so kind to males for the species when it comes to breeding. I have bred this species a few, well actually a lot of times, and I have never seen any aggression towards the males from the females. Now this is an old world tarantula, so it's not recommended for new beginners, in terms of, you know, people coming into tarantulas or into tarantula breeding because old world tarantulas are known for their venom potency being stronger than new worlds. Now, in terms of coming into breeding into old world tarantulas, after working with new world tarantulas, for any of you new tarantula breeders out there, I think this species here is a great beginner old world tarantula breeding project. I highly recommend it. And honestly, it's... <laughs> is probably the easiest old world tarantula to work with in terms of breeding. Now for me, I find that this species in the market is not very profitable unless you're breeding in mass numbers. So I recommend if you're, you know, trying to breed to make a business or trying to breed the species to make a profit long term, I recommend that people jump into two to three females to get it going because this species is not technically the fastest in growth. The growth of the species is typically moderate, so in between fast and slow. They're somewhere in the middle in terms of growth rates. So it may take a while to actually grow out a breeding project for the species. So I find that if you're working with just one female, you can turn a profit, but it's not too much of a profit because it takes time to grow the species out. And honestly, if you're just selling slings of the species, technically an inch and a half or smaller, it's kind of difficult to sell them unless you're selling these in batches and groups as a communal. So typically what I do is that whenever I hatch an egg sack of M. Balfouri, I will keep a percentage for holdback and I will raise those slings up to about 2 inches in leg span and then I'll sell them off because I find that when you're selling them at a smaller size, there's not really much of color coming in through their legs. And their blue doesn't typically kick in until about the inch and a half to two inch mark. And when you're trying to sell a spider and it looks kind of dull in color, it's very hard to actually make it convincing for people to buy them. Now there is the communal factor that people do use as a selling point, but that alone at times doesn't work too greatly, especially if you consider the fact that their growths are not technically the fastest. So I just typically prefer selling them at larger sizes. Now granted, it is a bit of an investment at times going through the way I do it, but I think the payout is much more in terms of getting a profit and making customers more happy because you're pretty much putting in a bit of the work yourselves to make sure your customers are more satisfied of getting a better end product. But then again, there are some customers who prefer raising slings up from being a little teeny tiny sling. But that's just how I approach, you know, in Balfouri in terms of the market. Now granted, everybody has different approaches on how they sell the species, so whatever works for you, congratulations. But for me, this is just the way I do it. Now, I don't really technically breed M. Balfouri often as a profit species anymore. Typically, I just usually just trade them off when I produce them for other species, or I just wait it out as stated earlier. But I also like the species a lot as a pet, so I actually do keep a lot of M. Balfouri. I currently have two adult females. I used to have more, but I sold a lot of them off and I traded them away. And I do have another batch that should be mature in the next year or two, which is around 20 or so specimens. So now I'm just waiting for them to mature. And this male that you're seeing in this video is actually the first male of this batch to actually mature out. So he's going with these two ladies. 
This male took about three years to mature. It's honestly quite a bit of time. Like I stated, this species is a moderate growing tarantula. It's not too fast, but not too slow either. So it could be an investment for some, but I find that if you want to get into this species as a breeding project, I think it's better to just buy a female and a penultimate male or a mature male to get it going. A female could cost you around $200 and then a mature male could be as low as $40 all the way up to $75. In total, about $275 to $300. Now for me, I can find a mature female for around $120, maybe $160 at most. And then for a mature male, I can probably get one for around $20 to $40. Maybe I can get one for free if I look hard enough. Now granted, I do work in the tarantula market, so I do kind of understand where to look and, you know, the connections and whatnot. But anyhow though, let us get back into this. Now when this male did mature out, I thought he matured out very quickly. Even though it took about three years, <laughs> to me it was fast. I literally said, hi -yi. I literally thought that was fast, even though it was three years. <laughs> a lot of people think three years is long. For a tarantula, not really honestly, depending on what you're looking at. But I guess to some it could be a very long time, especially if this is your only tarantula breeding project you have going on. But for me, tarantula breeding projects, a lot of them just come and go. So it more so happens on a whim for me. And I don't usually plan out too many tarantula breeding projects ahead of time because I don't like to just breed everything. I'm very meticulous about what I produce because I don't want to be overwhelmed by the numbers of slings I produce. Because remember everybody, I'm only one person here that's doing all of this tarantula work. So I'm actually overworking myself here, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. I'm just a one man band working with a thousand plus spiders a year. So I must be very careful about what I choose to breed and what I choose to work with. Now I do have future plans of wanting to start my own tarantula business as a small wholesaler that works with local tarantula breeders. I don't know exactly what I'll call the business, but in the future, that is the goal. And I don't know how long it'll take because I'm a one person, you know, army here. One person feeding, caring, breeding, doing all the work. This is going to take years. I don't know how many years, but a pretty long time, honestly. Because as of now, I'm just one person who is working with multiple spiders in my room. So if I can actually get your support, please feel free to subscribe and stick around. Because this is going to be a very long journey. But I think the outcome will be worth it because I really want to help out this tarantula hobby, especially here in the United States, because the prices here are absolutely ridiculously high and inflated as well. Now, if everything works out in the future, I would really like to go out into the wild, out into the field and collect some spiders myself. And if you're wondering where I would go, definitely to the Asian countries, the East Asian countries, Laos, Thailand and Vietnam. And those areas, I can't speak the language there, so so that shouldn't really be too big of an issue. I do speak it pretty decently, but I wouldn't say completely fluent. I speak it fluent enough, so I would really like to go into the field and actually collect some spiders there. And maybe learn a little bit about the locals. So in the past, I actually was a translator online. So I was an online translator back in the day. But some things happened, and I didn't really like my job, so I quit. And this was like right at the beginning of the pandemic, whenever everything was online for your job. And it wasn't really a thing for me. Now, in terms of languages that I did practice other than English, you had Japanese, Portuguese, French, Hmong, and then there was Spanish and Latin. But I never really committed to those two languages. The others I did commit to some extent. Now, the other languages that I did practice, I don't speak them fluently, but I can speak the basics of it good enough honestly so for those who are wondering how many languages i speak let's just say two since i'm asian obviously and then english is probably my second and then every other language just kind of came along but i guess it suits my ethnicity i guess speaking multiple languages because at this point my family tree is all over the place in terms of uh ethnicities and diversity i guess my dad can speak three languages my mom can speak two now, I'm hoping I can speak three languages as well. Well, although I do practice other languages, and I can speak the basics of them, so if I can speak those other languages more fluently, I guess it will be more suitable for my family tree, I guess, so that way it doesn't get lost. <laughs> Everyone is going to be like, Anatawa nani mono desu ka? And then I will reply with, Junisipa, apenas medeshin pas. 
or something like that. But either way though guys, I don't really speak other languages too fluently. I can speak the basics, but that's really about it. But uh, jumping back into this video though, actually believe it or not, since it took so long to record this breeding video, the camera battery actually dies on me, so it pretty much concludes right around here-ish. So let's wrap it up around here. So without further ado, I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, arigato gozaimasu. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay updated to whenever I upload here on this channel. I upload every single Tuesday and Friday, so please feel free to do so and stick around. Follow me on my social medias and support me on Patreon. And with that, stay lax and laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.